this is explosure mode. Here to tell you what I've been doing the last few days. Last couple of months. I have been... Just had a gender reveal party. I'm going to be a grandma! Yay! To a baby little girl! And to top it off, I've been packing. But of course, I kind of wanted to move anyway. I'm feeling stale here. So I feel like it's time to move on. The whole time I've been here for about five years, my neighbor has been calling on and off on me for staying here. So I've decided I can drop the drama. I don't have to be around the neighbor on this side, about three houses down. I can move on and get away from the drama. The reason she calls on me, this is my belief on why she calls on me, could be more than that. I don't know if she's jealous or what, but she calls on me because she can't control me. I put my daughter in school, and my daughter kept skipping, and I did not know it at first. And she started calling on me and didn't like that. She couldn't control my daughter. So then next she did the slander phone text thing, which was not true at that time. My daughter was not having sex. So she starts to run around the neighborhood and telling people about my daughter was having sex and this and that, which was not true. Then, to top it off, she starts taking pictures of teenagers outside and all over around the yard, saying they all came from my house. For one, that's harassment. And I didn't know how to handle that. I tried to get help with that, but the police told me they couldn't do anything. And I was told I couldn't get a restraining order. And we were on and off friends after that. On and off, on and off. But I made a mistake being friends with somebody that was trying to control me. And that's my mistake. But... I don't find a major regret out of it because I did change somebody. That person stopped doing drugs. But at the same time, that person used to give out drugs and drinking and cigarettes. Still gives out cigarettes to teenagers. But was giving out all these things to teenagers that is not right to do. Which I don't do. I don't give you drugs. I don't give you drinking. I don't give you cigarettes. And I don't sell pills. I barely take a pill. I'm scared of pills. So for me to take a pill, it's a, it's a miracle. It's got to be something like a Tylenol. And I'll do that for headaches. Or I'll take something like Pepto-Bismol for an upset stomach. And I'll rarely take that. Or if I've got a cold, maybe I'll go get some NyQuil or some DayQuil or Sudafed or Actifed. But that's a rarity that I'll even take that. Because I'm scared to take medications. And... At the same time, she was selling her Xanax. I don't sell pills. I don't care how broke I am. I can have zero dollars in my pocket. I will not sell you a pill. No. And I will not even talk about giving pills like that. If I had Xanax in my house, I'd flush that shit. Xanax is not a good pill to have. Xanax screws with your mind. It makes you forget who you are and what you've done. According to what I've studied. Otherwise, I don't really know. I only know from what I've studied on YouTube and from what I've seen from her. I do not want to be around drama. And if I... Don't need drama. I need to leave. This thing about trying to control me, not liking what I write. And I say I'm not changing my writing for you. I don't need somebody up under me. Oh, you're writing wrong. I'm not going to be painting 
pretty unicorn ponies and rainbows in all my music. I don't do that. I refuse to sugarcoat shit. I don't sugarcoat shit. That was some of the control I had to go through. But I kept saying no. She didn't like at first that I was carrying the bear. Whether she likes the bear being carried now or not, I don't know. I have quite a few people that say, don't carry the bear. So, I carry the bear because I stand against child abuse. And if people don't like that I stand against child abuse, then they're stupid. Because in due reality, standing against child abuse is better than being a child abuser. If I'm carrying a bear because I stand against child abuse, that means I'm not sexually abusing your kids. And it's simple. I'm not doing it. So she implied stupidity statements like, oh, you don't need to talk to my nephew. Okay, your nephew is like 18, 19 at the time she said that. He was about to graduate. She made a big deal about I can't talk to her nephew. I'm not even dating your nephew. I would never even go that far. You imply I'm a child abuser? Really? You're stupid. That would That's far from where I would go. And then the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, text that I got on the phone, sex slander text phone, that was because of my daughter. She tried to slander my daughter's name. My daughter does not have sex at that time, was not having sex at that time. And now she's pregnant, so of course now we know she has had sex. But she was not having sex at that time, and my daughter told me, when she started having sex. But she didn't tell me until she started having sex. Of course. She talked to me and told me, okay, mom, now you know I'm having sex. But I was not having sex at the time. She said I was having sex. She was running around the neighborhood calling my daughter a whore. This is not a good friend. I know that. Do I regret that I spent time with her? No, because I changed a life. She stopped doing her drugs and drinking. She still smokes cigarettes, of course, and weed. That's her business, not mine. I don't fuck with weed. She got my daughter to smoke weed, and my daughter ended up saying in the long run, she did not like weed, but she was forced to smoke weed. Anyway, I am not naming names, but I know there's another person involved that called on me from help, from where I'm at, because they don't want me here either. But that's because she don't want me here, and I'm assuming she paid that person to call on me, which I don't care. I don't care if people do weed, but when you go to selling your Xanax, that's wrong. And I tried to report that to the police, but they didn't listen to me because everybody else kept erasing my evidence. I tried to be a friend with her but because she kept calling on and off on me first. She started. I don't know why and I'm assuming it's because she can't control me. But anyway, this is the drama I've been putting up with all these years. She did take pictures of teenagers that were out here that had nothing to do with living with me or even staying at my house. So the picture she took was to try to make it look like I had more company than I supposedly had. Sure, I, I probably had company that I wasn't supposed to have, but who cares at this point? I'm moving. And I don't want to be here anyway. So, yeah, I've had company. But who hasn't? She's had company, too. She's had people she wasn't supposed to have here, either. And there's been people that stayed in her house for weeks and for months. So for her to point a finger at me, she was wrong. So being, I don't want to be around somebody that's trying to control me. I'm going to move. I don't want that. I don't want to be around the drama either. To top it off, she don't want me to have my grandchild. So that was her last straw. She's like, oh, I don't want you to have your grandchild. You're going to either abort your grandchild or make your daughter abort her grand, her daughter, your grandchild, or give her up for adoption. 
There's nothing wrong with this family here. My income might not be the greatest, but there's one thing here that counts. There's love. There's not abuse. So with that in mind, she couldn't control me and she started calling on me again. And I will not name names, but I know there's somebody else that's involved that she probably paid money to. She came out of the room after she left the room from talking to this person. She says she doesn't suspect a thing. I'm like, who don't suspect a thing? I don't suspect a thing. Oh, wait a minute, why am I saying I don't suspect a thing? Is she referring to me? And yes, I do believe she was referring to me. But anyway, I have chosen to do what God has called me to do. I have chosen not to back down. I love writing. I have been writing more music than any other person will ever know I've been writing. I have at least 350 songs written with just the words. I have been working on backgrounds. I've got about 50 to 100 backgrounds written for some of this. I will be working on getting the music together. I have Magic's Music Maker, Miss Mixcraft 7. I've done three songs on GarageBand. So I'm working harder than people know I am working on this. The only reason a lot of this music and writing hasn't got out, I have no major regrets, only letdowns. I do try to get my stuff going. And there's people that said they're going to help me put it on a desk and show me how. Who haven't. And there's people that said I'll help you with your video who haven't. So I've only had major letdowns. I don't feel like I've had any major regrets. I take that as lessons learned. Not major regrets. Like I've learned not to be friends with people that are controlling they're not good for me. So I drop people that want to control me. One. I drop people that think of me as just money. I don't want anything to do with people that think of me as just money. If I see somebody that's in need and I feel they need, that's my choice. Not theirs. But if I feel they think they need, that's not their choice. I drop them. Oh, she's going to give me money when she gets out of there. Blah, 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 blah. Somebody asked me for 40 something dollars for their bills. I told the person I didn't have the money. She said, well, when you get your music out there, can you give me 40 something dollars? I dropped her. I did not talk to her ever since, whoever that person is. Because I don't want people to come up to me asking me for money. If I feel by God that you're supposed to get that money, that's different. If I don't feel God telling me to give it to you, don't ask me for it. Because you're not getting it. I'd rather put my money in towards helping missing children websites. Or child abuse websites. And God will lead me to those people when it's time. Right now... My music hasn't made it out there, and I understand why. I went out full creepy. People don't want to hear full creepy. People don't want to really hear the truth. How nuns and priests kill children. People don't want to hear that nuns and priests were also stealing children. Associated Catholic Charities did what they did, and I believe they made money from all this. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I was there to see that they did steal children. I was there to see that they did murder these children just as well. If you spoke, you died. I figured I'd let you know what's going on with me now and why I'm taking a slow time and getting stuff up. I'm very slow at this because I keep getting major letdowns. And because people are not really listening to my story. If I get people to listen more, then I can put the story out more. 
I am protecting plenty of other people. And there's a lot of names I cannot mention right now because a lot of people would die. A lot of people would be murdered. I can't tell you how many people are talking against this group home and how many people are writing against this group home because I'm not trying to murder off people. I don't want to lose people that I know or witnesses. So I cannot speak up the people that are writing against them right now. So with that in mind, I'm holding a lot of secrets that you all are not allowing me to share. And I'm also process of moving and writing against these same people. So I haven't given up either. But see, I'm not afraid to say my whole name. Rebecca Louise Smith Lodge. L-O-D-G-E. I'm not scared of these people. I could die for what I'm saying, but I'd rather die for what I'm saying and die for what I believe in than to sit at home and do nothing. There's people that could speak, but won't. They're scared to speak because they're afraid they're going to die. I'm not afraid of dying. I have nothing to lose. So with that in mind, this is Explosion Mode. That's my stage name. Signing out. Have a God blessed day. Yes, my dad was a neighbor man, so I have the right to do that.